this episode we continue our trip to Italy through Mendelssohn's eyes with the analysis of the last two movements of his Italian symphony. Hi, I'm Giovanni Rilio, I'm a conductor and the composer, and welcome to this episode of Conducting Pills, a series where we look into a classical piece or part of it and outline its structure and phrasing, orchestration and harmony, with the bonus technical tips for conductors. I want to take a second to thank all of my patrons and to remind you that on my Patreon page you can find the full episodes of Conducting Pills and the extra episodes tackling technical aspects on top of the live sessions and many other patron perks. Now, let's begin. To be honest, this is the movement that speaks less Italian to me. It's somewhere near a lovely courtly minuet, which would sit well in Venice as much as in Vienna. The structure is a clear ABA with a coda. The first theme is presented by the violins in octaves. It's curious, though, that they enter along, almost like a two bars introduction following the pattern of the first two movements. In fact, we're starting on the dominant, and when the other strings join in on bar three, they remain on the dominant harm. The A major only arrives on the fifth bar. A little weight is added by the entrance of the horns and the double basses on bars eight and nine. And flute and clarinet close the first paragraph, which has a traditional repeat. We move on with the same idea, which modulates and finds some shadows in the minor key. The initial musical idea returns, bridging back to A major. The heritage of those shadows is present in the offbeat sforzato. But eventually, everything clears up, closing the first part in the most elegant manner. Notice that there is no repeat here. We move directly into the middle section, introduced by a hunting-like call of the bassoons and horns. The answer is given by the first violins first, and then the flute. See how, once again, everything is bare, clear, reduced to a minimum. The phrase comes to an end with only four players, followed by a traditional repeat. The rhythmic element opens the second part of this middle section, amplified by the trumpets and timpani, and is retaken by the strings with a more battle-like character. But we soon go back to the more relaxed atmosphere. and we whirl back to the beginning. The coda implements the rhythmical element from the middle section in a very gentle way, mixed with the main musical idea and closing again very elegantly. Another short introduction. The atmosphere of an elegant evening is swept away in this final movement by stomping chords with woodwinds trills on top. A curious thing here is the key. Normally we would have an A major, like the first and third movement, but Mendelssohn reverses it to the A minor, mirroring the tradition of beginning a symphony in minor and finishing it in major. And the obsessive rhythm that will take us all the way to the end begins. This is the only movement that makes use of an authentic Italian folk style, incorporating the saltarello and the tarantella. Both of them are fast folk dances. Under the obsessive rhythm in triplets of the strings, that is our tarantella rhythm, the theme is portrayed by the woodwinds. Only two flutes at first accompanied by the first violins. The second time round, the rest of the strings join in while the clarinets double the flutes an octave lower. The witness is passed onto the first violins in an exciting crescendo that little by little embraces the entire orchestra. And we get to the modulating bridge moving to the canonical E minor. After 
after which we would expect a second theme, if this was a normal sonata for a movement, that is. Mendelssohn goes back to play with the tarantella rhythm, mixing and matching different elements. The rhythm is relentless till so we come to a figure that starts putting stop to it. The tarantella rhythm pops back up, but it's swept away, at least temporarily. The rhythm overlaps and the episode is repeated with an enlarged orchestration. We get to the end of the first part in a clear E minor. which immediately shifts back to A minor and the tarantella begins again. But it's just an excuse. After a few modulations, we we'll land on the saltarello. The theme is frantically passed from one string section to another, though everything remains crystal clear and all in a pianissima to piano dynamic. The woodwinds join the dance, but then they go their own way, playing the tarantella. And the strings answer with the saltarello. The tarantella seems to take over as the strings retake the rhythm reinforced by the brass and timpani. It's the saltarello again, in a game of alternation between the two that doesn't seem to see an end. Slowly but surely, the dynamics drop as we approach the end of the movement, but the tension is still there even in the pianissimo of the strings in bar 254 and following. The tension is palpable, the theme is disrupted in short questions and answers, and in a final crescendo that recalls once more the saltarello, the movement ends with great energy. In a way, this is like the first movement of the symphony. It's so fast that you really need to get out of the way as much as possible. This means, generally speaking, small movements with a very short rebound, clean and tight. Control and step back. Initiate or energize a passage or a dynamic and then let the orchestra play. Less is more. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video. Ring the bell so you will get notified every time a new video comes out. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can do so on my Patreon page and if you're interested in conducting technique, follow my Facebook group. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece and if you have any suggestions for future videos. And I look forward to seeing you next week with a new episode of Conducting Fields when we will go through the overture of Wagner's Tannhäuser. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao. Consider. Think about switching fluidly between one and three, about how you can join bars into a single.